Whenever cult classics are brought up, it's easy to look back to the underappreciated gems of days gone by. A lot of the time, stuff that went under the radar for years is rediscovered, whether thanks to a reprint or the public lauding by a prominent figure, and reaches brand new audiences that weren't around for it at the time of release. But time never stops moving forward and new movies are made all the time. So what modern movies are out now that are slowly gaining a cult following? could be called classics. Let's talk about it. It's time for the top five modern horror cult classics. But before we get to the list, we've got a word from today's sponsor, Exter Wallets. They were generous enough to provide me with one of their flagship parliament wallets in Napa Black, and I am super impressed. Check this thing out. It's pretty sweet. Comes with this solar charge tracker card, so you're always gonna know where it is. Um, you can use an app to find it, or you can use it to find your phone. Here, check this out. Double click this. There it is, there's my phone! <laughs> Likewise, I can go into the app and use it to find my lovely cart. Oh! <laughs> I am personally a fan of how small and sleek and minimal it is. And check this out, so this, this is my favorite feature. I've been showing it off to everybody that I can get to listen to me. There's this little button at the side, and you hit it, boom! All your cards pop right out, and then you can just take them out. Slide them back in, it all fits right in there. They come in all sorts of designs and materials too, so there is something for everybody. So follow the link in the description to find an extra wallet of your very own, and if you use our link, you can get 20% off your purchase. Thanks again to Exter. Now, on with our list. Coming in at number five, we've got Midsommar. Ari Aster and cult classic will someday be totally synonymous. Write it down, mark the date, something like that. I might stoke some controversy by saying so, but after putting out two incredible horror movies in two years and consistently putting horror love into the world, Aster is on the right track. He's well studied and tends to wear his influences on his sleeve. He's interviewed Scorsese and supports cinema in as many ways as he can. Sure, he's early in his career, but there's no denying the excellent in his first two. And if you weren't a fan of those, then just wait until whatever happens next. But for now, we look to what's already out there and what could be considered a cult movie right now. Midsummer was the anticipated follow-up to the much-talked-about Hereditary, a horror movie set in broad daylight in a quaint little commune in the middle of nowhere. People are maypole dancing and wearing flower crowns, not exactly what folks associate with horror. But Midsummer makes it work. It takes these things and makes them horrifying. And it does so after painting the whole fairy tale on an enormous tapestry right at the beginning of the movie. There are so many elements to pick apart here and so much to discover. A second watch is honestly a whole new experience, and I'm sure in time folks will find even more hidden away here. It's hard to find faults in a movie so meticulously crafted, and it's new, like it didn't come out that long ago. So there is plenty of time for it to seep its way into pop culture at large and affect all sorts of other stuff. Maybe I'm just fanboying out a little right now, but this is an incredible movie with a whole bucket full of iconic moments that doesn't get nearly enough love outside of the horror sphere. Coming in at number four, we've got Mandy. This is the modern Lovecraft movie that folks should be concerned with. Like, the best Lovecraft stuff to come out in the 80s and 90s was Stuart Gordon and Brian Usna, absolute cult classics. Then the popular interest in Lovecraft kind of fizzled and anything getting made was definitely low budget. Lots of good low budget stuff here for sure, but it remains strictly in the not quite popular enough to go cult category. I guess we can talk about like Slither? Then Lovecraftian horror interest came back full force with all sorts of stuff earning that popular Lovecraftian comparison. But a lot of the stuff that went for the straight up Lovecraft adaptation couldn't quite hack it. I'm sorry the color out of space, but Nick Cage makes good movies better and bad movies worse. He brought you down a little, but Mandy? Oh, he brings the heat. This is the pink-tinged cosmic horror movie you've got to see. Complete with mind-melting sequences of incomprehensible terror, random side characters who know way more about the occult than you would have thought possible, and more deranged cultists than you can shake a stick at. Panos Cosmatos has made some of the most visually engaging sensory overload movies possible over the past decade, and I can't think of a more 2010s way to do cosmic horror. Mandy is one crazy powerhouse of a horror movie, and it's a major shame that a lot of folks haven't seen it, but it's got some hardcore fans who know gold when they see it. And you'd better believe the support for this movie will only go stronger over the years. All you need is to show someone that last shot of Nick Cage losing his mind in the car, covered in blood and ick, and they'll be hooked. Not for everyone, but those who need Mandy in their life will find it. 
Coming in at number three, we've got It Comes at Night. Batten down the hatches because apparently people don't like this one. That's too bad. It Comes at Night is paranoia embodied, and if you can make a movie that can be described as such, you deserve to have a cult classic on your hands. I pray to the deities of cinema that this is just one of those cases where an awesome movie just didn't hit at the right time, and the passage of time will make everything okay. People weren't fans of the thing when it came out, and look where we all are now. That's all about not being able to trust the folks around you too. Granted, the special effects are much cooler in the thing, and they also have Kurt Russell, but I digress. It Comes at Night is a movie that nails the atmosphere it was going for. Something feels off, even when it shouldn't, and that is a good thing. Every character is something hidden behind a facade, and potentially even more hidden that nobody even knew was possible to hide. It never spells anything out, letting the performances and situations speak for themselves. Who can be trusted? Is anyone in the right frame of mind to make that call? What happened before the movie started? Is there anything actually in the woods? Plus, the backdrop is a highly contagious disease ravaging the planet, making folks want to hide away forever in the woods. Definitely worth a rewatch considering the circumstances, and definitely one that should be vindicated over time. Either that, or I'm a big weirdo, which, you know, equally likely. Coming in at number two, we've got Raw. If a movie can permanently sear an image into your mind, it's got something going for it, and Raw is one such movie. A look at growing up, fitting in, and cannibalism, there's a little something for everyone. Sorry if I sounded a little bit like I worked for IGN right there. This is a seriously wild movie. Every time you think you've got a handle on what's going on, something even more outrageous happens, but somehow it manages to feel grounded. Disgusting, repulsive, and horrid, but grounded. Nothing feels like it's too ridiculous to actually happen, but it continues to hit the audience with insane, visceral moment after insane, visceral moment. You would think that it would be hard to relate to a girl who eats her sister's finger and barks like a dog while trying to eat a cadaver, but it's not. There's a very human story at the center of it all, but to get to that center, you've got to make your way through a whole lot of raw meat and vodka shots to the eyeball. Anyone who has seen this movie remembers it, and that alone is enough to cement its status as a cult movie in the making. And finally, at number one, we've got Climax. I mean, it's Gaspar Noé. Ah, what else do you need to hear? I should probably make some sort of case for Climax though, right? This is a movie that doesn't stop. Once the initial interview stage is over and the party begins, it is relentless. The amount of jaw-dropping moments packed into the 97 minute runtime is unreal. There are camera work moments that are absolutely nuts, choreography and dance moments that are mind-blowing, music cues that can't be forgotten, character choices that make you want to scream, mishaps and reveals that make your heart drop into your guts. The whole experience is just so immersive, it's impossible to look away. You might want to look away at times, especially when things get really hairy, but good luck pulling your eyes off the screen. Holy smokes. I'll leave you with a quick log line to hopefully summarize some of the chaos. A bunch of very talented and competitive dancers get together to practice in an empty building in the middle of nowhere, with everything going sideways after someone spikes the sangria with LSD. Strap in, this one goes. Noe is known for his intense, visually striking movies, and Climax seems to distill all of that into a super tight package. All-timer opening dance sequence, too. All of these should go down in history. Will they? I suppose we can't know that for sure. But if folks continue looking for challenging and perhaps underappreciated horror, then I think we'll still be talking about these in the future. Cult hits, impossible to predict. So what'd you think of the list? Am I way off in my rankings? What are some modern horror cult classics you can come up with? Make sure you let me know down in the comments. Speaking of comments, let's take a look at some of your more aquatic ones from the top five horror movie monsters nobody talks about. Frankie Arenas says, I recognize that still of the host anywhere. Also my brain, WTF is that? Oh wait, Bong Joon-ho's beasts, carry on. It really is an incredible monster, isn't it? Elizabeth Lynch says, another underrated horror movie monster is the Toxic Avenger from the Toxic Avenger movies. I mean, he did get a kid's cartoon. I don't know if you can call that underrated. Andrew Treadway says, The Ruins. Absolutely loved that movie. Didn't know about the book. Oh, it's definitely worth a read. Lori Wenzel Grant says, I love that hoodie. Where is it from? I'm not wearing it now, but it was my uh, Texas Chainsaw one from Online Ceramics. Check them out. They do all sorts of little horror drops throughout the year. And Lair Mistress says, Guess what, Keegan? I majored in anthropology. Bwah ha 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 ha. Just be careful when you're eating soup, okay? And that's all the time we have for today. I'm gonna bike my way through a snowstorm. Thanks again to Extra Wallets for sponsoring today's video. Make sure you check out that link for 20% off. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. But time never stops moving forward, and new movies are all. What the? I don't know what I'm saying here. I, I, I'm going off script, folks. Let me try that again. <laughs>
get my uh, my teleprompter back up. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, 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 how do I wrap this up? I don't know. <laughs> That's. Granted, the special effects are much cooler in the thing, but they also. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm, yep. And it's relentless. The amount of jaw-dropping, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that last line again. Gosh darn it. Speaking of comments, let's take a look at some of your more. I mean, <coughs> oh, excuse me, I, I don't know, I, I breathed right into like the, the wrong part of my throat. <laughs>